Hello. Today we're working on the third activity of the variables chapter of Learn to Code 2. This activity is called Incrementing the Value. Our goal here is to increment your variable to track the number of gems collected. Okay. And uh, if you look at this puzzle here real quick, right now it says we have zero out of six gems collected. But if I run the code again, you'll see uh, some, well, first we have an error here, uh, so we can't run the code while there's missing uh, an initial value for gem counter. So I'll go ahead and give that a value of zero, saying that we haven't collected any gems. Then I'll run the code again, and it shows these wireframes up all over the puzzle, uh, and only a certain random number of those will actually contain gems. In this case, five of them pop up randomly throughout the puzzle. You could have as many as say 12, but uh, at any time you run it, you could get a different number of gems in different locations. So one more time, and here we have uh, three only showing up at different places. So we're gonna need to go all around all the tiles here in this U shape. We're gonna need to travel straight down the uh, row that we're on, collecting any gems that are there. Then we're going to need to turn right along this short row right in front of us, collect any gems that are there, turn right again, traveling down this row uh, to bytes right, and collect the gems uh, along that row. So as I'm saying this, I'm thinking to myself, well, I said this idea of travel down a row collecting gems uh, quite a few times. And that might be a nice intermediate goal to shoot for, this abstract idea of travel down a row collecting gems. And we'll worry about going to the other rows and collecting their gems later. But if we can, if we can break this problem down into one subproblem at least, travel down a row collecting gems, then we can uh, probably solve this problem fairly easily. So let's just review what we did last time. Last time, in the activity called bump up the value, we learned about this idea of incrementing a variable. And it's uh, reviewed for us right here. Remember, a variable is a container that can hold a value. And we use the keyword var to say that the, uh, to declare a variable. So here we say var my number. And when we give it an initial value, that's called initializing the variable. And here we're giving it the initial value zero. Now in this next line, this looks kind of funny. Uh, if you did this this kind of a, a uh, if you did this kind of a sentence in math in your math class, you'd get in a lot of trouble uh, because your instructor would say, "There's no way that's right," because my number can never equal my number plus one. My number plus one will always be one bigger than my number. So that kind of a, a sentence doesn't work in math class because in the case where these two bars here, that is an equal sign in math, and it's not an equal sign in computer science. In computer science, this is the what we call assignment operator. And the way the assignment operator works is you always evaluate the expression on the right-hand side of an assignment. So in this case, that's my number plus one. So whatever is in the value my number, whatever value is in that variable, in this case it's zero because we just set my number to be zero in the initialization statement above. So we take that value, my number is zero, we add one to it, now this expression evaluates to one, and we assign it into my number. So my number then becomes one. Now if we were to do this line of code again, we would take the value that's in my number, which is one. We would add one to it by evaluating the right-hand side. So now my, my number plus one is two, and we would assign that back into my number. So now my number would be two, and so on. So you can see how this, this line of code, this statement, my number equals my number plus one, is just adding one, um, one, adding one to the value of my number each time. It's saying, take the uh, original value of my number, or take the current value of my number, add one to it, and put it back into my number. 
So that bumps it up by one every time. So we call this idea in computer science incrementing a value. Increment means to bump it up by one. Later on, we'll learn a different way uh, where we could say something like my number equals my number minus one, and that would be decrementing a value, decreasing it by one. Okay, so back to the puzzle here. Uh, the puzzle says we want to keep track of the number of gems we've collected, and we want to really sort of travel along this puzzle collecting gems until we get to the end of the puzzle. Okay, and we said one way to break this down because we, we, we found we were saying the uh, idea of let's clean up a row of gems first. If we, can, if we can get that part of this done, then this problem should be fairly easy to, to solve. All right, so uh, clean up a row of gems. Well, uh, not as easy as it sounds, but we did something like this in the last puzzle and we had a function that helped us out and that function was uh, m you know uh, maybe move forward uh, then if we're on a gem collect it and when we collect it we need to in you know increment our gem counter and we can keep calling it over and over and over again until we reach the end of the row we know we're at the end of the row when we're blocked okay so let's work on that piece of the puzzle first this idea of breaking the puzzle into simpler pieces is called decomposition. We're decomposing a problem into smaller and smaller chunks and that makes it easier to solve. Okay, all right, so we said we wanted a function here. So function, and this function is going to move forward collecting gems. Okay, and all we're going to do there is move forward and then if we're on a gem, if we're on a gem, then let's go ahead and collect that gem. And don't forget the other thing we wanna do is right after we collect a gem, that's the perfect place to update our gem counter variable. So gem counter, instead of being what it was before, gem counter, we're gonna add one to it increment the value of gem counter. Gem counter, new gem counter is equal to what gem counter was before plus one. Okay, so there, that's great. That's a great move forward collecting gems. Now, uh, let's practice, uh, see if he can clean up at least one row. And we said we want to just keep moving forward collecting gems until we're blocked. That sounds like a while loop, right? So we'll say while we're not blocked, we just want to keep moving forward. Uh, whoops, we don't want to keep just moving forward. We want to keep moving forward collecting gems. Okay, let's test our code and see if he uh, collects all the gems on this first row and then he should stop when he's blocked. Okay, all right. We've got three gems to collect on this first row. And as long as he's not blocked, he's gonna keep moving forward, collecting gems, calling our function here, move forward, collecting gems. Excellent. Okay, uh, by, uh, the character seems a little disappointed here, but he should definitely not be disappointed as we've just written a uh, very useful uh, function, move forward, collecting gems. Now, this idea of cleaning up a row is uh, so nice of an abstract idea, I think I'd like to make that a function as well. So to do that, let's put this while loop right here that we just made. This while loop will clean up a row, right? Let's put that in a function as well. So let's say function clean up row of gems. Okay, and now we don't have to think about any of these details. All we need to do is say, hey, clean up a row of gems and it will execute this while loop here. Okay, so from now on, all we have to do is say, clean up a row of gems. So our whole program here might be as simple as saying, clean up a row of gems, then turn to the right, then clean up this short row of gems, then turn to the right 
and then clean up another row of gems that the, the uh, this other side over here that should solve our puzzle here let's give it a try we might make some changes to this also in a minute Okay, he's calling clean up row of gems, so that should handle this row, and we've already tested that, so that should work out just fine. Once he gets done cleaning up this row of gems, he's going to turn right there. Now he's going to clean up this row of gems, then turn to the right, and finally clean up this row of gems. Okay, excellent. Uh, that worked out very fine. We've got a nice readable main program here. It's very easy to see what's going on in this program. We're basically cleaning up three rows of gems and in between we're just turning to the right. So that's nice. Um, I just want to just say we could maybe make this even a little bit more um, extensible and I'm saying well, what if this puzzle, instead of just these three rows, what if there was some spiral shape to the puzzle that said, you know, um, well, we're just going to keep cleaning up rows of gems and turning to the right until we're blocked, for example, right? So here at the end, he's blocked. We could actually take out these lines of code right in here and say we want to just keep doing this as many times as we can while we're not blocked. While we're not blocked we're just going to keep clean up a row of gems and then turn to a right. That's even a little bit simpler and not only is it simpler but it would work for a puzzle that was even more complex with this. Say a spiral shaped puzzle that had more than just three rows to clean up. Maybe it had 27 rows to clean up, all of them spiraling out, turning to the right each time. So let's give that a try, and then we'll keep cleaning up rows and turning to the right. All right, as long as we're not blocked, we want to clean up a row of gems. and then turn to the right. Now we're not blocked, so we can clean up the next row of gems. Now we're not blocked, so we can clean up the next row of gems. Now when we come over here and we turn to the right at the end, we will be blocked, so we can't clean up any more gems at that point. So here he turns to the right, now we're blocked, and so this while loop right here ends and he's done, okay? All right. Uh, don't worry if you didn't get that last part. That's a. Uh, it's just um, something I wanted to show you to make a little maybe uh, more generalized uh, main program. But really, the big goals here are to talk about variables again. We've got a variable that's keeping track of the number of gems our character has collected. So at any time, gem counter will be will represent the number of gems he's collected. And in order to do that. We wrote a function here where it's just going to move forward one, check if you're on a gem, collect that gem, and then increment our gem counter. So we take whatever value our gem counter was before, plus one, and we assign that new value back into gem counter. We replace gem counter with whatever was in it before, plus this new value. Again, that's called incrementing a value. Finally, we just keep calling move forward collecting gems in this other function, an abstract idea, clean up a row of gems. We keep calling move forward collecting gems as long as we're not blocked. And that is uh, our, all we need to do to clean up a whole row of gems. And then we realize, well, if we can clean up a whole row of gems and turn right, we can just keep doing that over and over and over again in this puzzle because all the turns are to the right after you clean up a row and as long as we're not blocked after we turn to the right we want to keep cleaning up rows and that's what we did in this while loop okay 
All right, this is a great little program. We abstracted away a lot of ideas, this idea of moving forward, collecting gems, and an idea of cleaning up rows. And we did a nice job incrementing and keeping track of the number of gems we have in here. So overall, a great little activity. Uh, I hope you understand what we went through here. If you don't, I put some questions or comments in the comment sections of the video, and we'll see you next time. Good work, everybody.